Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. And our program today is a very special one because we are just finishing the bicentennial that was from 1814 to 2014. That means that we have been here for 200 years and we are interviewing all of the people who had a very significant role in the bicentennial so that the people in 2064, when they open the capsule and read and listen to or view anything that we have for them, they will know what we did. As a matter of fact, we can be assured that uh, those people who are going to be on the committee in 2064 will merely have to put ditto marks under what all the other people did, and then they can sit back and enjoy their 250th anniversary. Some of us won't be there, but some of the two people who are, whom we have here today most certainly will be there because they're very young. Uh, we have Laurie Hanna, who is the president of the Wadsworth uh, High School Alumni Association, and Becky Slenka, who is also a member of the high school association, or uh, the, the high school, the alumni association of the high school. And we're going to have them talk about themselves just a little bit to tell us who they are and who their kids are and and um, who their family is here in Wadsworth and so forth. Now, it occurs that all three of us are graduates of Wadsworth High School. I was graduated in 1948, and then Becky and, and Lori will tell you when they graduated, and then you can figure out the math and see how old they are. Becky, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about your, yourself, your family, and uh, I know that you go back a long, long way in Wadsworth, and uh, very prominent families in Wadsworth. Go. Uh, my maiden name was Bolick. My parents were Bill and Betty Bolick. My mom was Betty Jones. Um, we lived in Wadsworth our entire lives except for a very small period of time. My dad worked for Babcock and Wilcox and we were transferred to a town in Mississippi called West Point. We were there about seven years. Other than that, it's been a lifelong residence here in Wadsworth. Tell us about the Bullies here in town. Um, they've been an interesting family. My um, dad's family lived on a farm south of Wadsworth on Mount Eaton Road, and someone from our family has been there since the 1800s, which I mm -hmm. think is pretty special. Mm -hmm. You have a cousin there living now. We do. We have a cousin, Tom Kelly, who lives there now uh, with his family. At one time, the Bullock farm <laughs> was 360 acres. It was. At one time, and then it got split up, unfortunately, over the years, and. Uh, then it got it to be 160 acres, and then after that, they I don't think there's an acreage left except for the farm that... Well, and there is some on the other side of the road. Uh, I live on the property as well as my sister. We both built homes there. Oh, did you? We See, did. That's what happened. They, they started subdividing, mm -hmm. and the first thing you know, the 360 acres comes right. out to be... Right, over the years. Uh, over, over the um, years. So. But it, it was just a wonderful childhood uh, there. Even during the time we lived in Mississippi, we came up and spent the summers at that farmhouse. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my fond childhood memories are from that farm. Um, kind of an interesting thing, and I didn't know about this, our family never spoke of it, but there was a book recently called Who Killed Ora Lee? Yes. Mm -hmm. And she was actually killed on our property. On your property. Yes, and I, no one from the family ever spoke of it, and I'm sure it was because it was a, a very sad thing to have happen, and so it was never spoken of. It's also of, but very controversial. Yes, um, it was. I was not there when this happened because it happened about 40 years before I was born. But uh, even 40 years later, people, well, not 40 years, about 30 years after I was born, uh, before I was born, uh, people of different sides, uh, who did and who didn't yes. do it, uh, still talked about it. So, and, and uh, I went to school with the people who were the next door neighbors of where your grandparents or your great grandparents lived, and um, they also uh, talked about it. True. Everybody has their own opinion oh, yeah, on bad. who possibly. And you can be, did you can that. believe that my neighbors knew exactly who it was. And if you don't believe that, if you if you don't believe me, just ask them, and they'll say that there's no question in their minds. Of course, that's not true. But true. that's the way the, the way that they um, perceived it. What about you? Uh, you have a doctor, Boldy, who was very prominent right. here in Wadsworth for right. many, many years. And unfortunately, I never got to meet him because I knew it was him. Too well, I didn't ago, know him personally. I mean, I knew who, who he was, obviously, because his. Uh, granddaughter and I went to school together. 
Uh, could I tell a little story about Absolutely. Dr. Absolutely, sure. Do Dr. Bolick had one of the first hospitals in Wadsworth, and he had it in his living room, or dining room, I guess it was, the dining room. And uh, they lived upstairs, and they had a three-bed hospital down there. And Mrs. Bolick, bless her heart, feared every single solitary day of coming downstairs and finding a dead body in her <laughs> dining room. So after several years, she entreated him to get rid of the hospital. And that was probably one of our first hospitals. And that, that story came directly from his granddaughter, and whom she uh, knew, and she knew her grandfather very well. Tell us a little bit more about uh, children. Okay, my children are Michael and Patricia. Uh, Patricia is Patricia Johnson now. She has two children, Devin Johnson and Blair Dobbins. And we must be sure to not forget any grandchildren. Yes, and that's <laughs> your life will those be. Those are miserable. my grandchildren, <laughs> and then my son Michael. He lives in Carrollton, and he has three children: Alex, Taylor, and Brooke. Mm -hmm. And I have one great grandchild, and his name is Brody. Brody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he belongs to Devon. No, they is live a, in Medina. This is the woman who's going to be here in 2064. <laughs> she has a great grandchild already. Good. I don't think I will be here in 2064. <laughs> what year did you graduate from? 1963. 1963. Now, those of you who want to know her age, just subtract 18 from that, <laughs> and you'll know exactly how old she right. is. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> right, but. Uh, our class, our sophomore class, was the first class that went to the new high school mm -hmm. prior to this one, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it was built campus style, and everybody was concerned about that because in those days, girls were not allowed to wear slacks or jeans to school. It had That's to be right. dresses, mm -hmm. and you weren't allowed to take your coat with you to your classes. It had to stay in the locker. So it was very cold in the wintertime walking from class to class because you had to go out different buildings. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, that sc campus school is no longer there. It was right. torn down a couple of years ago, and we have a, n a new school now that does not have a campus flavor to it whatsoever. But, Laurie, I guess um, you're the baby of the family here, right? Aren't you? Of uh, uh, here? Well, yes. I mean, of the <laughs> you're probably the youngest uh, person in the entire uh, 2064, or rather 2014. Um, um, bicentennial, uh, serving as a chair, sh a chair of the um, Alumni Association. And tell us a little bit about yourself and start, I see, but you have a, on your shirt that just says 04. Does that mean that you graduated in 04? Yes, it does. So in, in 2064, which will be another 60 years from now, or 60 years from the time that you graduated, yeah, you won't be very old, will you? Well, I will be celebrating my 60th class reunion. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not going to tell us how old she is, but we can figure <laughs> it out. We can figure it out if you were born in, or if you graduated in 2004. Tell us a little bit about your family. Um, my family? Mm -hmm. I, my parents are Joe Hanna and Lisa, Lisa. Porter Hanna. Uh, my mom's family all came from the Canton area. And my dad's family was from Wadsworth. Um, my dad's father was John Hanna. Um, your, your grandfather? My grandfather. And what was John Hanna's occupation? Uh, he was a um, state farm agent here in town. And, and he what was else? also the mayor the for mayor of nine years. Almost 10. Almost 10. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He took over when the previous mayor uh, Dr. Bob uh, Daniels passed away, and uh, he took over because he was president of council. And, and then, then I he followed, was followed him. As, up I by followed, him. followed him as mayor, right? Mm -hmm. And John and I were your grandfather and I were very, very close friends for many, many years. Tell us about your uh, marriage, uh, what you do for a living, and uh, what your husband does for a living, and about um, this cute little Josephine. <laughs> Uh, my husband, Alex McElveen, is a dentist. Um, Where? He's right on Broad in Street, Wads uh, close to downtown Wadsworth. And he uh, he's with uh, Warner McElveen Dentistry. Mm -hmm. My daughter, Josephine, is almost two. Mm -hmm. uh, she, was, she came to a lot of bicentennial planning meetings. Yes, as a matter of <laughs> fact, she stole the show at almost all the bicentennial <laughs> she, meetings. She... <laughs> She did her time. <laughs> she did her time. Tell us a little bit about your 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 uh, husband's family. 
Uh, the McElveins. Uh, my husband's dad, Steve, is the judge here in town. Which judge? The municipal judge. The municipal judge. Judge McElvain. And his mother, Sarah, is a teacher up at the high school. And what does she teach? Uh, history. History. Your husband's great uncle, what relationship did he have to the Wadsworth City Schools? Uncle Rex. Rex. I hear about him a lot from um, alumni. When I first came and took over the Alumni Association, my my name started going out at the at the footer of the emails, and I got a lot of responses to my last name, wondering how I was related to to Rex. And what was Rex's position in the Wadsworth Schools? He was the athletic director. Athletic director, yeah. And he is also a coach. And he married Betty McDermott, who was a friend of mine. Okay. Yes. And uh, I can go all the way back to Betty's mother, who was Hazel McDermott. And then she, uh, her husband died, and uh, she married um, Claude McCuff, McDuff, D-U-F-F, and she lived to be 93 years of age. And they lived in Western Star. So we have a long, long lineage here. <laughs> and also, Becky, I can go back with your family, with the, with the uh, Bullocks. I can go back probably to, uh, on, on a personal memory, I can go back probably 80 years because my neighbor was one of the Bullocks. And um, as far as our history is concerned of Wadsworth, and particularly, I, I, might, I think I have them, in, I wrote three books for Wadsworth's uh, history. And I think that I included, I'm not positive, but I, I think I included the bull. I'm sure I included uh, your, your grandfather, great-grandfather, the doctors. Yes. But I included some of the other, other people as well because they were a vast family in Wadsworth. All, both families are very, very prominent. Now, uh, tell us what parts, you, well, first of all, I guess, uh, Becky, how about telling us a little bit about your involvement in the many committees that you served on for the Bicentennial and then uh, kind of focus it in on uh, how you worked with the alumni and also with um, the, um, uh, some of the, some of the uh, other things which are historical and Wadsworth and so forth. You just were everywhere at all times. So tell us about it, Becky. Uh, well, our bicentennial committee through the Wadsworth Alumni Association was Sally Porter, D. Franks, and myself. And tell us who Sally Porter was and who D. Franks was. Sally was, uh, Sally what? Sally Porter. I know her maiden right. name. I can't remember what her maiden name was. Morrison. Morrison, that's right. <laughs> and um, it's funny, I have a little story with her as well because when I was in high school, we took shorthand back in those days, yes. and Sally was student teacher, and she came into our class and she student taught for our class, so I always had a fond memory of her and she was a great teacher. Oh, she's a great person. Yeah, she was, uh, is. Um, and so, and I, I'm not familiar with Dee Franks from before the committee, but it was the three of us that served. And Jack Ollum had come into one of our meetings and was just giving us... Tell us who Jack Ollum is, because uh, I'm sure that we have identified him, but we're going to try to identify everyone we talk about. Okay. Uh, Jack is head of downtown Wadsworth, mm -hmm. and obviously is a man of many hats. Right. And he came to one of our meetings and... Um, had given us uh, a task to do, and he thought because of this year being the unveiling of the boy with the leaky boot, it would be nice if someone from the alumni group right. was part of that. And, and so um, I was the one that was chosen to do that. So uh, Joe Rogers, who is the commander of the American Legion at this point, mm -hmm. uh, formed a committee, and we started meeting very early in the spring because there was an awful lot of things to get uh, done. And I wanted to make sure that I read off who was all on that uh, committee so I don't Please miss do. anybody. Please do, yes, we, would, we don't want to miss anybody. Right. So it was Joe Rogers, uh, obviously was the head of the committee, and then the other volunteers were Roger Havens. Who was the principal of uh, Franklin, Franklin School. Jack Ollum. Who Jack Ollum, who was also the co-chair of the entire Bicentennial Committee. He, the mayor, and, and um, uh, Jack Allum. Uh, Tom Stugmeyer, who everybody probably has seen around town with his camera. Took all of his pictures. He took over 35,000 pictures. pictures. He's just uh, great. There he is. Trisha Johnson, who is my daughter. Uh, Mike Rufner, 
Connie Bailey and Nancy Ewing, and those people are from the FW as well as the Legion. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a lot of details to work out uh, for this unveiling because we had to figure out where it was going to be placed. And the original Boy with the Leaky Boot that we had in Wadsworth had been donated to the war effort. Mm -hmm. So we had nothing here to even get started with. Well, they found out that Sandusky had the exact same statue as what we had had and they agreed to let us make a mold of it, which took a lot of time and I was going to say, they didn't agree right off the bat. They didn't, <laughs> and it took a little while, but they did finally mm -hmm. agree. So um, we ended up having the mold made at, uh, from that. And then I wanted to make sure I said the other. It was decided that the statue was going to be placed at the east end of the gazebo park mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. One of them was because they wanted it to face the flag they wanted it to face the setting sun. And also, most military statues face west. Um, but I think one of the bigger points to that is that because the sidewalk was already located at that end, they wanted that spot to be a destination rather than just a, a drive-by looking at it. And it's turned out to be just that. There's always someone milling around the right. statue sitting there with their children, reading the names of, of the people who have departed that served. And so I think it was, a, it was a very good choice. I think in the beginning, some people were questioning that because they felt like they couldn't see it as they drove by, but that's not what it was meant to be. It was actually the destination. So they decided the unveiling obviously was gonna be at the Memorial Day Parade. Um, lots and lots of hours and hours and work went in from the city workers to, to Jack, to all of the people that had their hand in it. Um, but it was unveiled that day, and what the parade did is they started at the VFW where they normally do. They marched around the corner, they stopped there, they had a little ceremony there. Uh, Jack Ollum spoke as well as Roger Havens and some other people, the mayor, and I, you did too, Caesar. No. And then they marched on to the, to the cemetery. But as a side note, uh, I guess they are going to start that as a tradition now. That's going to be a tradition. And I think that will be very nice. They'll start, as always, at the VFW. They'll make the corner. They'll do a moment of silence and a prayer. They don't want to take anything away from what they do at the cemetery, but they felt like it was important to do that. And they'll turn the fountain on at the same time right. and make it a tradition. Becky, the two, the two of the people who spoke that day were also alums and outstanding people from Wadsworth. Do you remember who they were? I'm trying to think. I remember Jack well, I mean, the, who Robin spoke and who uh, spoke at the cemetery, I'm sorry. Who spoke at the cemetery. And they were invited by the uh, committee. The uh, astronaut, yes. who was Mike Mr. Foreman. Mr. Foreman. Yeah, my, as a matter of fact, believe it or not, he's related to you. OK, I did yes. not know that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I can I can trace that. It's a very okay. very distant relationship, but he's related to you okay. through the Bolics um, and the Omeras and the uh, well the Formans, but the through the Omera families. Uh, there's a relationship there, and I uh, probably 99th cousin, but he's related. And then we had Linda Spoonster, who is uh, the appointment to the Under Secretary of. Um, Veterans Affairs in Washington. She was just recently appointed to that, and both of them, she has a PhD, and and um, I can't t tell you all the degrees that uh, Mike Foreman has, but he was actually an astronaut twice, went into space. So we have an astronaut from Wadsworth, and a person who is in charge of all of the veterans here, coming from Wadsworth, uh, in 2014, and they were the ones who spoke at the cemetery then, because That's we always right, get out I'd to the cemetery. That's right. Yeah, yeah, right. But um, that was particularly significant. And I can tell you just a little bit more about that because I remember the first boy with the boot. And the boot was gone. All the years that I saw it, the boot was gone. And I can, I can go all the way back to 1936 when our bus would go in front of that boot every day. And it was during the Depression and no one had anything, food or anything else. And uh, I always th thought, I did not know what the significance was, but I always thought that the boy with the boot was was holding his hand out like this, and I thought that he was asking for food. And I always felt bad for him because I knew that what it was like. We were very, very poor. Everyone was very, very poor at that time during the Depression. And then in 1942, 
they turned it in for a scrap because we had to, I guess people thought we, we would need to have um, bullets made out of uh, anything that was metal or whatever. So it was gone. And then here, um, 1942 to 19, or uh, 2000, uh, about 70 years later, 70, 70 what was, you're a good mathematician, uh, you're an engineer. What, uh, how many, uh, from, so subtract 2014 from, from uh, uh, 1942, and what do you get? 72 years, isn't 42. it? 72 uh, years, isn't it? Yes. 72 years. 72 years later, we had, and you were part of that committee. Good for you. Laurie, you um, have had so many opportunities as a young woman to do these kinds of things that um, uh, the rest of us who are old, I'm 84 years old, I'm, I'm working on it, and here you're 22 or 3, tw well, no, you're a little bit more than that, aren't you? 28. You're 28 now, finally 28. Mm -hmm. But uh, at age 28, you're one of the leaders here in the town for doing a lot of these good civic things. Tell us some of the things that you actually were involved with um, in addition to being the president of the Alumni Association. And tell us, uh, and this is going to be a kind of a, of a difficult question for you, tell us how you felt working with all of these old people and you're the only, I don't think there's anyone who's younger than you who were, was on the committee uh, or uh, on any of the committees. Uh, so tell us, how did you feel? How did I feel? Um, wow, well I got involved um, in the Bicentennial Committee in an interesting way. Um, I got involved as leader of the, the October event, which was the Thriller. Tell us about um, the Thriller. The Thriller? Yes. Um, what is, it's a reenactment of Michael Jackson's music video. But you'll have to tell us who Michael Jackson is because in 2064, they may not know who he is <laughs> or what he did. But right now he's extremely popular and yes, yes. everyone knows that Michael Jackson except people my age. Oh, I don't <laughs> believe that. <laughs> um, well, Michael Jackson is a very famous pop star. Was. Was. And he died at an early age. He did. 54. Unfortunately young. Um, and he uh, is known for many things, one of which is uh, the Thriller video, which consists of um, zombies coming to life and uh, dancing. <laughs> so I got involved with the Bicentennial events uh, because my husband and I participated in a Thriller event in Lexington, Kentucky. And, and what, what were you doing in Lexington, Kentucky? In Lexington, Kentucky, my husband was in dental school. Dental school, right. And tell us why you became involved with something with, that had something to do with dance. <laughs> well, I've always danced my whole life. As a matter of um, fact, you were part of a what group? Uh, I was with Gotta Dance Studios, which is no longer there, but it was out in Seville uh, when I was growing up. And the Tour de Force Entertainment Company, right. mm -hmm. um, which you were a... Uh, sponsor of mm -hmm. sorts mm -hmm. and um, so we, yeah we got involved in that and then when we moved home um, the committee was looking for other bicentennial events and asked if we'd be interested in um, promoting something similar in Wadsworth so we recreated that reenactment in Wadsworth so through that I'd, I got to be on the bicentennial committee and um, went to many of the meetings, like I said, with my husband and often my daughter, Josephine. Um, and it was very interesting to hear how all the diff different events were going. Um, I guess I went to the events meetings and at each of the meetings, every um, chair of each event would speak about their progress on how the planning was going for their event, for first night or for the ball or for, all the Founders Day, all the different events um, had their place in that committee. And it was a great opportunity to meet people um, that, or to get to know people better that maybe I had only known 
um, growing up in different capacities. So. You, knew, you, you did know who I was. I did. I Would did. Would you tell us why or how you happened to know who I was? You were my principal at uh, Sacred Heart School That's growing right. up. And I was there for only three months because your principal, the previous principal, had left uh, about 10 days before school started and I came in to, to help out. And then at the same time I was running for mayor and since I got elected, I had to leave the school and uh, assume the mayor's duties. So we hired a, another person to do the, the to do that work, and that was my retirement job. I had retired at that time from the University of Akron, and um, uh, Father um, Joe Layback, L-A-B-A-K, um, called and I wanted to know if I could help out for a couple of days. So I was there for three months, so. <laughs> and I got to know Lori because. Um, uh, would you be embarrassed if I told people something that uh, you did in school that was uh, probably extraordinary? I, I don't remember. Well, I can tell. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. As a matter of fact, uh, this is my 63rd year in education. <clears throat> and during that period of time, I had many administrative positions, <clears throat> both in public parochial schools and at the University of Akron, where I was dean. And during that period of time, I had never permitted a student in the eighth grade to take all four of the high school math programs as an eighth grader. And you did. And you passed every single one of them. As a matter of fact, in one year, did you not? I remember taking classes. I don't I don't remember how many. <laughs> wow. Would you like would you like to know which ones you took? <laughs> Yes, I do remember, excuse me. <laughs> I, I do remember exactly what you took, and you took all four <laughs> of them. So um, you actually became uh, a real whiz in mathematics, and then you went on to college and became a what? Um, I graduated mechanical engineering mechanical from engineer. University of Dayton. From where? University of Dayton. University of Dayton, that's right. And um, since I've been working as an environmental engineer, I'm a consultant for a company called TetraTech. And um, I assist companies or cities or anybody who with, um, I assist them with environmental compliance. Ah. Becky, in all of these programs we've been taping, we have asked the people to tell us some of the little stories that happen behind the scenes. And some of them have been hilarious, some of them have been, wow, that happened, you know. Uh, do you remember anything that happened behind the scenes or if you don't want to tell us what happened behind the scenes, could you tell us some of the involvements and how many hours you've had to work and what kinds of things you had to do to make uh, the 2014 bicentennial a success? Well, I can't think of anything offhand that would have been a funny story, uh, but to kind of continue on uh, through the boy with the leaky boot, mm -hmm. Once that was done, uh, Roger Havens actually is the one that thought about doing this, and I thought it was a great idea. Um, he thought that it would be nice if we would get the elementary school children to write an open letter to the veterans and ask them to march in the parade. Mm -hmm. And so um, Roger and I contacted each of the elementary schools and the student council. Uh, we decided to kind of narrow it down because there would have been way too many letters, obviously. So we narrowed it down to the student council. And they prepared letters. And then we sent them to the post. And the post printed them and put them in the last two weekends prior to the Memorial Day parade. And it actually did generate some, some extra folks being there, which I people. thought was <coughs> wonderful. A lot of people came. Um, and as we were lining up for the parade, it was kind of hard to count how many that actually had, had come in. But I remember this one um, man in front of us that I was so touched by him because he had his service dog with him mm -hmm. and his wife. And I'm assuming he was blind. It, it appeared that way anyways. And I thought, how nice of him to be able to do that uh, for the town. And what about the ones who would, were not able to walk? They rode. They rode. And Joe had cars. Uh, waiting for them, so we had several people that rode in the parade that way, and it, just, exactly. it was very touching. That and how did you happen to get people to volunteer, quote end of quote, to drive cars? 
Um, Joe took care of that, and so I wasn't uh, a, a part of getting those together, mm -hmm. but I'm sure he, you know, just tried to come up with people who he knew would really want to do this for the for the town. You mean and Joe the had, commander, right? Yes, Joe the commander. He didn't he didn't care whether they wanted to volunteer or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just told <laughs> He just you, said you're doing you're it. You're doing this. <laughs> uh, Joe doesn't um, not the most democratic person in the world. Wonderful man, but he gets things done. Yes, he does get and things but, done. But unfortunately, uh, from what he told me, uh, when he asked these people, they were just overjoyed to be able to do it because uh, they knew fully well that many veterans could not walk right. that distance. That's a, uh, probably about a little less than a mile. I would think. Uh, by the time that you get into the cemetery, down to the cemetery, it's only about, about a quarter of a mile. But then going all the way back to where the ceremony is. That's a, right. uh, that's a good piece. Yes, it is. And uh, it's kind of hard walking. Um, I'm a veteran, and um, one of the things that, um, well, I had a responsibility that day, but if I would have, um, uh, if I would have been going to the cemetery, uh, I probably would have opted to take a ride. Well, I could probably walk it, but that's a, that's a long, long uh, It is, especially in the heat, if it's particularly warm and that it was day, a, or if it day, was, yeah. it was a very hot day, or if it's raining or whatever that's right, exactly. else can happen. Another question for you, Bec uh, Becky, uh, is that um, when you served on the, quote, events committee, you probably had to uh, spread your tentacles to other committees as well. How many committees did you actually touch? Well, I would say probably three or four. Which one uh, particular? Total, because it would have been working with the veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some of the other things that we tried to do so that it put the Wadsworth alumni in light during this uh, year was working with some of the activities that were going on throughout the summer. Um, we had an urban craft festival mm -hmm. uh, that takes place in May, and so we had a table there so that uh, Bob and Sue Holvey manned that many times. There was a lot of other people who volunteered as well, but Bob and Sue always seemed to be right there. And they sold like the uh, Wadsworth uh, hats, uh, stopping, stocking caps. Uh, they had a table even at first night, which was very, very chilly that night, if you remember rightly. Tell me. And they <laughs> sat there, you know, at their table. Um, we did that. We did uh, they urban craft. Too, did they they did T-shirts a little bit later. Oh, was it? Uh, that was for the tailgate uh, party that in we, October was we it did, and that was in September. September. And is that one right, of them? That is. That's one of them. Uh, there was a sidewalk sale in August. We did that, and then there was also, uh, as I'm sure a lot of people remember, but during the summer on Thursday nights they always had the uh, bands at the gazebo. And so there was someone there for that as well. And then at all the basketball games. Um, and again, lots of people helped with that. There are too many to even name. But Bob and Sue Hall, they were really uh, critical with that because they just believed in it so much, trying to generate the extra um, you know, membership drive as well as selling some of the, the apparel. And they did a fine job. Yes, Becky, they did. Um, I'm going to ask you another question, but I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about it while I ask Lori a question here. And that question is, tell us about the attitude people had against the Vietnam War veterans. And I'll come back to you in a couple of seconds. But right now, uh, um, uh, Lori, um, how about talking to us about the uh, reunions that our alums had and how you generated that interest? Okay, so um, the Alumni Association um, actually last year was 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 reformed, rejuvenated, um, which tied up really well with the Bicentennial and like Becky said that's why we wanted to be involved in a lot of the events uh, was to raise awareness. Um, and we surely hope it's going to be around in 2064 because we, we don't want our people to so. forget about where they came from at Wadsworth High School. We surely hope so. And if you've never heard of the Alumni Association, uh, we hope you check us out at um, www.wadsworthalumni.com. 
and you can go there and you can get um, sign up to be on our email list and we send out um, alumni news so but with the alumni um, we one one part of our mission is to assist classes with their reunions um, that can be in, in many different forms but um, this year uh, there were a couple classes that wanted to have their reunions um, at, during you know the bicentennial celebration so a few classes had their reunions during the community picnic um, and they had a um, certain spots that they could have their class reunions at the picnic which was fun because there was food and games and shopping and um, the old-time baseball and other things to participate in which made for a fun reunion weekend we also we actually had some other reunions that uh, were not coincident with the um, uh, tailgate um, I think at one point I counted 15 different reunions and that came from the photographer who went to every single one he of them, did. took pictures of everyone. As a matter of fact, we had one in the class of 48. And um, one of our, now we are all either 84 or 85 years old. Uh, and um, some of the people had a difficult time getting there. And when they did get there, um, they, we had a difficult time getting inside the restaurant and these are all of the, 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 the woes of people who were up in, up in years. So one of our class members came very, very late. And he wanted so badly to be in the picture. So the photographer, who happened to be um, Tom. Tom Stugmeyer, Tom Stugmeyer, who does a tremendously good job, actually took his picture all by himself and then photoshopped it right next to me. <laughs> How nice. my picture. And it, it, no one knows the difference, but <laughs> that's what we can do. Um, I need to make a comment on your giving the address, www.wadsworthalumni.com. What happens if 50 years from now, that's not the way that people can identify our um, association? What happens? Yeah. I don't know. We don't I'm know. sure we will keep up with the times, though. We also we'll, we'll have see. we have a Facebook account and uh, LinkedIn and Twitter accounts. Well, as now this well. means then that you're going to have to be the president for life, <laughs> so that you can make sure that that is a continuum. <laughs> Let's go back to Becky, and we had the Vietnam War, which was very, very unpopular in the United States. It now, was. 50 years from now, people may not think that. It was that bad, but tell us how it bad was, it was. It was very volatile. I felt so sorry for the men that had to serve to come home to the reception that they got. Reception? Um, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> bad reception. Um, because they were, they were giving their life for their country the same yeah. as any other man does and didn't get the credit that they deserved. And I think that's part of why so many of the Vietnam War vets had the problems that they did, not that all men coming back don't. But I think the drugs and the alcohol abuse during that time was because they felt so... Disenfranchised. Yes, yes. And it was just a war that nobody wanted to fight, but they still went and represented their country. And I think it was so unfair what they got when they came back. I like the way you put that. Um, the fact is that it didn't make any difference whether it was unpopular or not. Right. We still had 15 people who died. Right. And it doesn't make any difference whether it was a popular war or a non popular war. These poor kids lost their lives. Uh, we had a little bit of that in the Korean War, which, uh, in which I served, which was the war private or pr uh, previous to the uh, Vietnam War. It was not until 50 years later that it was declared a war, mm -hmm. it was a co Korean conflict. And I can still remember, uh, I was mayor at the time, and in 2002, we were at the uh, National Cemetery, and I'm sure that'll be there still in 2064. Well, many of the things we talk about won't be here in 2064, that, so we're going to identify them geographically. But I think that the cemetery will still be there. And as we were sitting there, an announcement came over. We have now been declared 
or the, the Korean conflict has now been declared a war. And with that, someone came and gave all the Korean veterans a little pin saying the Korean War, and I still have that. Oh, nice. So, the, you know, we had two wars, one right, in, uh, one right after another, in which they did not consider it to be a war. But when the Korean War came on board, as you said, people were terribly upset about it. And they treated the soldiers as if they were... Traitors. Traitors, and, and yeah. what a shame that is. Yeah, that's horrible, right. That's exactly right. Becky, um, or rather, uh, Lori, um, one of the big problems that um, uh, alumni associations have is that we have people all over the United States. I mean, maybe you can even tell us some places where they are living which are not even in the United States. I can know of a couple places myself. All over. All over. Yes. Um, did any of these people want to contribute? Did they send back letters? Did they um, give any kind of indication that they felt bad because they couldn't be here for the 200th? What, what kind of letters did you get from these people? Oh, yeah. I, I received a lot of feedback from out-of-state um, alumni who wanted to be involved. Um, a few were able. One instance was um, for the homecoming celebration, the tailgate. Um, many homecoming queens made the trip home and participated in that, which was very nice. And how many of those queens came by? We had the queen from the first queen of Wadsworth, who was? Mm, the first? I don't know. I don't know. You'll have to tell me. Oh, uh, <laughs> the, in 1939, we had the first queen. Before that, we didn't have any queens oh, for any okay. of, the, of the celebrations. And um, it was um, yeah. actually Mayor Dano's wife, uh, who was the, um, whose maiden name was Melvin. And um, uh, she was the first queen. As a matter of fact, there's a story about that. Um, all of the high school girls were contestants, or whatever you call that. You know, they were, they were um, voted upon by their by their peers to be um, representatives. I guess it would be the representatives to be voted upon by the, by the general public. And um, the um, vast majority of them were seniors, and there were a few who were juniors. Now, my two older brothers were, uh, were a senior and a, and a junior at the time, and they were um, probably going to support the, the whatever girls were in their class, the classrooms and so forth. However, this very, very precious and very beautiful 14-year-old girl became a contestant, and she actually won the queenship for 1939, hmm. the first one that we had. It was Esther. Esther, Esther? Esther Daniels, Esther Melvin Daniels. And she came, and she's 90 years old, and she came, and uh, she still is a striking, striking woman. And um, we also had the, the queen from the um, 150th, and that was Charlene Charlene, Charlene. Oh, it was Force. It used to be Force, force Severance. Yeah. Uh, yes. Severance and for, Force and for Severance. And uh, we had uh, also the first Miss Wadsworth, who was Betty McEntee Gehring, uh, as those. Now, while we're talking about that, we put them in trucks and did what when we went down to the football game? Describe that, that whole scene. Uh, so, what happened is a the parade, uh, which was the homecoming queens in the backs of and the what, trucks. And what time was that, um, what, what event was that? This was the homecoming tailgate. In homecoming for what? Homecoming. Um, for high, what, the high school? For the high school. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. which was in September. Yes. Of 2014. Yes. Do you remember the date particularly? 24th, maybe? Of September. Something like Friday that. Friday night. Nice day, beautiful day, a lot of wind, mm -hmm. and we did what? We uh, assembled where? We assembled at um, the 
CIS building. Central no, I have to tell us what the CIS building is. Remember, that this is 2064. Central Intermediate. And that used to be the Middle junior school, high school. Right? And that was the high school. And when I went there, it was from kindergarten through grade 12. Wow. So we assembled there, and then we paraded um, to the football stadium. And uh, tell us how we got down there. What, what route did we take? We went down Mill Street. Okay. And then we cut over... Kyle. Kyle, and then we went down Broad. Broad, then turned left on um, Grandview. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And went down to the football field. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, why did we do that? Why did we do that? Well, that was to commemorate what? Um, it's my understanding that there was a tradition that there would be a homecoming tailgate from CIS or the middle school or the high school to the, t to the stadium down Mill Street. Down Mill Street. Um, so they wanted to proceed down Mill Street for that tradition. Um, and then it's my understanding that we went over to Broad Street um, for the visibility. Is that what you, that's what I heard? Well, that was a nice way of putting it. There's a Mill Street has such a steep hill that some of the older alums weren't okay. able to get up there. Uh, when I was in high school, this is many many years ago. When I was in high school, every Friday night that we had a home game, we would meet at the high school and we would follow the band down Mill Street and go up that hill. And even as high school students, some of us had a rough time getting up that hill. And then if the band or if the, the team won, we would then have the band uh, play and march up Grandview and down Broad Street, close the street off completely, and have hundreds of people following. And if we lost, the band would walk quietly without playing down Mill Street and back up to the high school. Okay. And that happened for years and years and years. It started, I think, in 1937, and it was still going on in the 50s and 60s. But then I think we got so big, the, was, the, the school got so big, and the school moved. And, and what was your year that you say that it was the first one? Well, I, I was a sophomore in 1961, and that was the first year that that high school was so open. The, so the tradition probably went from 1937 to 1961. Yes. And at that point now, we are a mile and a half, well, about a mile away, a mile east of the, of the square now, where the right. new school was. And that would have been a fur piece to walk down. Definitely. <laughs> so we didn't Definitely. do that anymore. Right. But that was what that was to commemorate what uh, what we did uh, in those days. We have a few more minutes left here, Becky. Um, you know something that you said a little while ago intrigued me. You said that you worked with the veterans. Now, when you worked with veterans, did you get a different feel for some of the ways that these veterans think and feel, or did you already already know uh, how they were, and that's the reason why you volunteered to work with the veterans? I volunteered to work with them because that's just something that's close to my heart. And why? Um, There's a good reason. Well, my my grandfather served in World War II and the Korean War. Mm -hmm. uh, my cousin served in Korea. Um, my um, ex-husband was in the Navy, and he went around the world with uh, the Navy. And I just feel like, you know, I think everybody has a soft spot in their heart for, for something that really means something right. to them. And I feel because these men have given their lives and their health, so many wounded come back, and you know, they, they didn't uh, lose their lives there, but their whole lives have been changed forever once they get back. And that just happens to touch my heart. And so I joined the VFW for that reason, because I wanted to be part of the Ladies Auxiliary um, to try, we work with the Wounded Warriors Project, we do all kinds of things that helps the veterans. And I just think that's an important thing because so many times they tend to get forgotten uh, once they're home and they get reacclimated and then people tend to forget about what their needs are. And so that's why I volunteered for that. Now, Becky, those soldiers who belong to the VFW and to the American Legion already gave. Yes. But tell us how they're still giving in terms of money to the community and service. Oh, gosh. Anything that the community 
uh, has as a function. They're right there either helping through uh, bodies, uh, being present to, to volunteer for whatever the function is. They raise money. Uh, one thing that the Ladies Auxiliary does every year is they pick out a needy family. Maybe the veteran is overseas and the family is left behind. Uh, it could be that they're, it's a, a, a wounded warrior type of thing where the, the family is still trying to get their lives back together. Uh, we give a lot of dollars for that as well as giving like the kids of that family a Christmas, finding out what it is they, they want for Christmas and doing that. Uh, we go to the county home every year and we give the county home a, a Christmas party and they absolutely love it. Um, there's just so many activities that every month at the meetings, there's always some need that needs to be met that the VFW or the American Legion, either one, is so active in. Um, and I'm just, I feel so privileged to be a part of that because of what they do give back to their community. How much did the VFW, or the, the American Legion rather, give to the boy with the boot? A lot. I'm not sure exactly how much. 12,000. Uh, okay. And then they had the, the well, school well, kids had the penny drive, and I thought mm -hmm. that was just phenomenal as $8, well. $8,000. In pennies. In fact, I think uh, Roger Havens was talking about how the banks had run out of pennies because these kids had been taking all of them the, the for this penny that drive. The counts the pennies mm -hmm. broke. <laughs> and they yeah. haven't repaired it yet. They promised them, we're not going to repair this thing because they'll bring more pennies in. And that, I think that's just phenomenal that's right. that the kids went to that degree, so, yeah. Did Roger Havens uh, start that program with the pennies? He did. Mm -hmm. he and did. then a lot of people from the community gave money, too. I think that it cost something very close to uh, $30,000 I believe in, that was the money. ending but price. we figured out that they're probably over $100,000 because of the times that, well, for instance, you say that you went to, uh, to um, multiple meetings, the, to, to the, those meetings, uh, all of the people who were involved with it and the, um, just so many, many people, so many man hours. Yes. And that's expensive. It so is. You have, to, you have to count that in, don't you? True. That's right. And you're a mathematician. You can tell us whether you have to count <laughs> it in or not, right? The, um, one more thing about the, um, uh, the uh, VFW and uh, the, the fact that um, uh, they, they, they are still serving, they, they continue to serve, they continue to serve. Um, the forgotten people in this community are the mates of those who served. They suffered True. significantly. As a matter of fact, uh, I was called upon to give a talk at the cemetery a, couple, few, a few years back and I talked about the people at home. Now, uh, the women's auxiliary are typically the wives of the veterans, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little, uh, a very, we have only a couple of minutes here, but tell us a little bit quickly about the women's auxiliary and what they do. Uh, you can belong now uh, because my spouse did not belong there, but I got into the ladies auxiliary through my grandfather having served. And so that's how I, I think this is probably going into maybe my fourth year. And tell us I've who been. your grandfather was again. Uh, he was Leon Jones. Leon Jones, right. your, your mother's father. Um, and my mother's father. And actually it was um, his mother's relative that signed the Declaration of Independence uh, as a delegate from New Jersey. And who was he? Um, his name was John Hart. John Hart. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I joined, my uh, daughter is president of the Ladies Auxiliary there now and I joined and I'm secretary for them. And the whole committee, it's, it's <coughs> wonderful how women come together as well as the men's, but the women come together and start talking about the needs of the city. And so, like I said, if it's, we do the children, or the children's, the county home Christmas party, we give them a picnic in the, in the uh, summertime. Um, we do the uh, drive for, uh, Salvation Army, the food drive, we all uh, contribute to that. It's just all through the year, there is a need that needs to be met somewhere, and these ladies band together and decide what that is and step up and volunteer and help. I want to bring that into the program, not because it's necessarily with the 2000 or 200th anniversary, 2000, 200th anniversary, but because 
we don't want anyone to forget these wars yes. and the people who served in them and the mates who also suffered during that period of time. We have uh, less than two minutes left and we need to talk about a couple other things and we're going to have to do it very fast. Becky, or rather uh, um, Laurie, <coughs> excuse me, uh, one of the things that you said uh, much, much earlier was that you were involved with this dance, what is it, the flash dance? No, what is, what is it? The thriller reenactment. Thriller. Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, the type of dancing it is, and you're probably going to have to tell us what um, Michael Jackson did that was so extraordinary and how you mastered it very quickly. Um, well, uh, we learned uh, the dance from the music video. And, and what, what, something about going backwards, what is it? You dance backwards and pretend you're going forwards? Or um, my husband, Alex, is very good at the moonwalk. That's moonwalk. a signature That's a I, Michael I, Jackson movie. Tell us yeah. more quickly. We have a, less than a minute. Moonwalk. Tell us about the moonwalk. Um, <laughs> the moonwalk, it, just like you said, it's a, just a, a dance move where you look like you're walking forward, but you're moving backwards. You're moving backwards. Yes. I, I don't know how to do it, and I'm, I'll never be able to do it in my lifetime, but that's something that's extraordinary. <laughs> Be Becky and Lori, thank you very, very much. You have made a tremendous and significant contribution to the 200th anniversary, and through the kids, through the alumni, through whatever the, you're doing, and through your uh, association with the veterans and so forth. We want to thank you for all that and for everything else that you do, and hopefully, hopefully that both of you will be viewing this yourselves in 2064 when they show this, and hopefully that all of your progeny, your children and grandchildren, will be saying, that was my mother or my grandmother or whatever. Thank you again very much. Thank you. Thank you.